Hey house pay friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we have a little bit of a different video. As usual, you are gonna hear clicking in the background. My fiance is doing stuff on his computer. There's nothing I can do about it. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about all of the topics that you're seeing on the screen here right now. And the purpose is to share with you the mistakes that I have made in the houseplant community and how you can learn from my mistakes. This video is basically a list of taboos, etiquette, pet peeves that I've noticed, and the debrief on houseplant clicks, how different platforms are, like Instagram versus Facebook and YouTube, and things that I think new people to the houseplant community really need to know, and things that no one is going to tell you. Also, just kind of like inside, the inside of the houseplant community, the truth about a lot of things that people don't really talk about. When I joined the plant community, there was no video I could watch watch to be like, don't do these things, or do these things, or here's what's okay, and here's what's not okay. Um, I hope that this isn't too confusing, but we're gonna be talking about a lot of things that people are kind of afraid to talk about and afraid to tell other people about the plant community. There is no tea, there is no drama, there will be no names. Before we go any further into this video, please make sure that you hit like and subscribe. If you like videos like this, maybe I will do more. I've thought about doing a beginner's guide for YouTube, for plants, and beginner's guide for Instagram. We're gonna get the rough stuff right out of the way. I, I really hope that none of this comes across as negative or that I am tacking anyone who is listening. Basically, I really want this to be a positive experience. I do not want this to be a negative experience. If you learn that you've done some of these things that are taboos or bad etiquette, basically, it doesn't matter if you've done these things in the past. It's all about moving forward and being our best self and respecting others around us. I don't want you to feel attacked. I don't want you to feel uncomfortable, but I'm just telling you from an insider in the plant community, someone who has nearly 13,000 Instagram followers and 11,000 subscribers or nearly 11,000 subscribers on YouTube. I've been doing this for over a year now. Of course, there's still so much to learn, but these are kind of the basic things that no one talks about that you shouldn't do. So I'm gonna say things like, you should not do X, Y, Z. I'm not attacking you guys behind the camera. That's just kind of how I decided to phrase these things. The first list is taboos and etiquette. The biggest thing on my list is do not ask people for cuttings of their plants. If a cutting is offered to you, that is totally okay to accept. If something is for sale, you are totally welcome to buy it. But if someone posts a picture or makes a video on YouTube or Instagram about a plant that they have that they love, it is considered generally rude to ask for a cutting. Normally the messages I get on Instagram that are like this, because it happens most of the time on Instagram and always after I post pictures of my album Monstera. And again, this is exactly how I read it in my head and I'm going to read exactly a message that I've gotten before. Oh my gosh, please, can I have a cutting? I have been looking for one for months and I cannot find a decently priced one. I have a budget of XYZ and I just am dying for this plant. Is there any way in your heart that you can spare a cutting for me? Another one I've gotten is, my daughter loves Monstera Deliciosa Albo. She really, really, really wants a cutting, but I just cannot afford to buy a plant for her. Is there any way that you can sell me a cutting of yours so that I can give it to my daughter? These bother me a lot. I get them almost daily and the problem isn't you know, that people are trying to do things for their kids or with the first message, it's someone is throwing themselves out there in a way that's going to trigger my sympathy and make me feel bad for them. So I should give them my cutting because it will make them feel better and that I am the only solution to their problem, which I'm not. I had to buy all of my plants and it's not that I'm unwilling to give away cuttings, but I shouldn't have to cut my plant that I love, that I spent so much money on and so much time and care in just because you want a cutting and it will make your feelings better. I know that that kind of sounds tough, especially if you're someone who's done that because a lot of people have done that. I've even done that in the very beginning. I don't think I was so dramatic in my message, but I've definitely asked people for cuttings of plants before that 
were not listed for sale or I've asked someone if a plant was for sale or if they would consider selling it. Those are less bad ways to do it, but if a plant is not listed for sale, it's not for sale. And asking for cuttings is a very rude thing to do, especially when you portray it as though you have a very big problem and the only thing that will solve it is that person's cutting. But then kind of on top of that, if you have a friend, if you know someone personally, like let's say that they're your close friend or your best friend and they have a plant that you want, I would not ask them for a cutting. I would say it's up to your own interpretation of your relationship with that person. If they have a plant that they've spent time and effort on and you know that they love that plant and you ask for a cutting, they might not want to give you a cutting but do it anyways because you asked and it would be uncomfortable for them to say no. So it's always better to think about how you will make other feel and it's very easy to fall into plant greed when you get into plants in the first place so just making sure that you're not making other people uncomfortable by the things that you're asking is pretty important if your friend offers you a cutting or asks you what plants that you want cuttings from from their collection that's completely different Okay, so that was the biggest one. The rest of these don't really need that much explanation, but I really feel like that is the biggest problem that happens in the plant community. That is a very big taboo. It makes people uncomfortable most of the time. Some people might even block you if you ask them. It's up to the person and up to how nice they are and how many times they've been asked that day or that week. So this other one is kind of just Instagram etiquette. Do not ask people to follow you back. I'll, I will give you an example of a message I received just yesterday. Can we feature you on our plant page if we give you credit? And I said, yes, of course. Then they said, or would you please check out our page and let us know your thoughts? And I said, of course. I looked at their page. I thought it was cute. It's a bunch of reposted photos. I personally don't follow pages that just repost photos. I like to follow the people who post those photos. So I told them their page was cute and they said, okay, will you follow us now? And I was like, well, I, I cause I don't want to say no because I, I like their page, but I don't want to follow them because all they're doing is reposting photos. Anyone can repost photos. I want to follow the people who are posting those photos. So I just didn't respond. And that's what I will do. If anyone asks me to follow them and I, if I've looked at their page or they know that I've looked at their page and I follow them, then I'm gonna follow them. <laughs> but if I don't and I don't want to, I'm not gonna follow you just because you've asked me to because I only follow accounts that I really, really, really like. And that usually goes for anyone else too. Don't ask someone to follow you back. It's gonna get uncomfortable fast. If you want to express a negative opinion about someone else's post, make sure to do it first over DMs privately. This is because if you have a big enough of a qualm with someone to tell them why what they did bothered you, doing it over private message first, it gets right to the person and it doesn't cause problems or drama in their comment section and it doesn't make them feel attacked. If you publicly attack someone else on Instagram because they're doing something that you think is wrong, 10 out of 10, they are not going to listen to what you have to say. If you really feel like someone is doing something wrong or you have an issue with the way someone is running their page or whatever, messaging them privately first and telling them your opinion and make sure you say my opinion of the situation is XYZ, right? That way you're getting straight to them and if they read it and are rude to you, then you're welcome to share your opinion publicly. But I always believe in giving people a chance before resorting to public shaming or like public commenting about something negative. Starting gossip about another Instagram account or YouTuber is generally discouraged. This is because the plant community for most people, including me, is a place to come to get away from drama and gossip and all of that stuff. But for a lot of people too, it's a place to start drama. There is actually a couple different Facebook groups that are focused on plant drama only. If you have a problem with someone, you should talk to them personally, which is what I've always tried to do in the past. It doesn't always work out, so then you have to resort to public talking because it's the only way to get their attention. Always working things out privately is the best because otherwise you're just bothering other people with your drama and you're working other people up about things that don't really matter for the most part. And then also you could make it into tea groups where people will gossip about you and talk about you and you don't want to end up there. <laughs> Those people are ruthless. This next one is a really, really big point. Do not assume that anyone is friends with anyone else. This is hard to talk about because this is something I did. When I first joined the plant community, I just assumed that all of these popular plant YouTubers were BFFs. Why wouldn't they be? They all have large followings. They all love plants. 
what could go wrong? If you assume that someone, or same thing with Instagram pages, right? If you assume that a page is friends with another page or a person is friends with another person, or you assume that one person doesn't like another person and you talk drama about person two to person A, without knowing that they're friends or enemies, you could get yourself in a load of trouble. I've had a lot of people assume that I'm not friends with people that I am and start drama and come to me and be like, oh my gosh, did you hear that XYZ said this about XYZ? Or same thing, I've had some of my friends come to me with screenshots of someone else being like, oh my gosh, did you hear XYZ about playing me Ashley? And then the thing that you thought that you were gonna bond with that person over, you thought you were gonna bond over drama, now you've just outed yourself directly to the person who you're talking about. Don't assume that anyone is friends with anyone and don't assume that anyone is, is enemies with anyone. Just <laughs> don't assume. A lot of people that you would not expect to be friends are friends with each other. And then I wrote a sub note, which is mind your mouth and what you say about others because everything on Instagram can be screenshotted. I read a couple of legal articles because of a sponsor thing that went south and whatever, and I was considering leaking messages of what the sponsor had said to me privately. Public apps like Facebook and Instagram, if someone leaks your messages, you cannot sue them. Under most circumstances, if someone leaks your Instagram and DMs, you cannot sue them because they leaked your private messages. The most you can do is just be mad. So I looked into this a little bit further because I wanted to make sure I was telling you guys the absolute truth. In order to sue someone for defamation, you have to hit four elements. Publication, the material must have been made public. Harm, the material must have caused the plaintiff harm. Fault, the material must have been published at the very least. Negligently, meaning the defendant didn't do enough fact checking before sending a text. And falsity, the plaintiff must identify a false statement of fact made by the defendant, not just a negative opinion. I also was reading into some lawyers giving people advice, and basically they said you can sue someone for that, but whether or not you'd be able to find a lawyer who would work with you, because it is considered a frivolous lawsuit, that's a whole nother thing. The most you can really do, unless you can prove that the someone either hurt you financially or they said something false about you to someone else, is just make their wallet hurt by taking them to court. There's a common misconception that defamation is just trash talking someone else, but defamation is lying about someone else. So if you're telling the truth, it's not defamation. But people can leak DMs without legal repercussion most of the time. It's text messages, that that's where it's dangerous because those are private messaging services. So mind what you say about others, to others, about anything. <laughs> there are many ways to grow plants. Do not assume that your way is the only right way. And don't get mad at others because they grow plants differently than you. I had someone once write me an entire thesis in my comment section on my allocation video because they said that every single thing I did for my allocation was wrong and I was gonna kill my allocations. I didn't even say anything back, I just deleted it because when people do that, it's not, it's not productive. They were swearing, they were being extremely rude. Like that's not the way to get to someone. What I did instead is just think in my head, well, if I'm growing my allocation so wrong, then why are they so big? <laughs> There's so many ways to grow plants. Let people grow their plants differently. Don't get upset at them if they grow them differently. It's not gonna be the end of the world if someone uses Miracle Grow versus Black Gold or Terracotta versus ceramic or, you know, whatever. I grew all of my plants in a north facing window and they got massive. So just let people grow their plants however they wanna grow their plants. Don't try to tell them what to do unless they ask then you're welcome to tell them. And that leads me into my next point, which is unsolicited criticism is unwanted. <laughs> Just remember that. If someone does not ask for help or tips or advice or anything, they probably don't want it about anything. <laughs> That's just like a rule in life. As right as it might be to you, or as justified as you might feel in sharing it, always make sure that someone is asking for your opinion or your ideas before you tell them that what they're doing is wrong or that they're gonna kill their plants if they do this or, you know, X, Y, Z. And this point is the last point for the taboo and etiquette category. Before you ask a plant YouTuber, a plant Instagrammer, or anyone else a question about your house plants or what you should do in this situation, make sure that you try Googling it first. A lot of the times people just ask questions because they don't think. They're like, oh, I'll just go to the source of information instead of trying to do research myself. But 
a lot of the times people are inundated daily, like me, with questions about their houseplants. And most of the time I can't even help because, and this is a topic I will get into later, but there are houseplant zones. And how I grow my plants in zone 7A, B is not gonna be how you grow plants in zone 2A or 10A. It's gonna be completely different. For me personally, I welcome all questions, even though some of them are ridiculously silly. I would rather you ask me than you know, the internet and get a wrong answer. But that's because I have a lot of time on my hands to answer questions. A lot of other people do not have time to answer hundreds of questions a day about plants. And a lot of the times people have their comments turned off on their stories because they don't wanna be asked questions. So that wraps up the biggest part of the etiquette and taboos category. But now we're gonna get into houseplant shopping etiquette. This is a pretty small category, but there are a couple things that people don't really know about houseplant shopping that is wrong and can even wind you up in jail or with fines. If you do not pay for a plant or receive the plant as a gift, it is stealing, it is theft. A lot of people do not agree with this in the houseplant community, but I have a couple different articles that I will link in the description as well as read some key points from to you guys to prove that that is not the case. If you have to remove something from a physically growing plant, it's theft. <laughs> You're not buying the whole plant. You cannot steal cuttings, plants, or plants from wild areas. The wild areas one is a really big deal and you can get in federal legal trouble if you do that. So don't do that, okay? I'm going to read to you a couple of excerpts from these articles. This first one is from the Washington Post and it is called, Beloved on Instagram, succulents are vanishing from state parks. Officials blame a foreign black market. And if you didn't think that there was a houseplant black market, you are wrong, it exists. Um, but don't come for me, like I'm not gonna talk about it any more than that. But I will read this article. On Friday, three men were charged with stealing more than $600,000 worth of wild succulents from public lands and attempting to smuggle them into Asia, where a lucrative black market for trendy houseplants is flourishing. To bust, or the bust, which led to the seizure of more than 3,700 plants is part of a large crackdown on succulent poachers who are believed to be part of international smuggling rings. Overseas, the plant retails for as much as $50 each, according to wildlife officials. Dudleia, a genus encompassing dozens of native species to the west coast, plays a crucial role in the delicate ecosystems of California's wind-battered cliffs, and the population has been already devastated by wildfire. These guys were arrested for stealing plants from the wild. Didn't think that stealing plants from wild parks was wrong? You can go to jail for it. I'm trying to find their sentence. When questioned, Back and Bong Joon Kim, that's their name, admitted to illegally collecting wild plants, according to the probable cause statement. But while Bong Joon Kim is in federal custody, prosecutors said on Friday that Back and Byung Soo Kim fled the country after their arrests and are considered fugitives. Don't steal plants. <laughs> Okay, we have one more article to look at. This is by The Guardian. It's called, A Growing Concern, Is Stealing Plant Cuttings Ever Okay? This one hits me close to home because the nursery that these plants were stolen from is called The Potted Elephant. It is one of my favorite nurseries in Portland, Oregon. And back in, when was this article written? Back in January, this girl walked into the nursery and had scissors and a big bag and walked into, so when, when you plant shop at Potted Elephant, there's the plants that are for sale, but then they have two additional greenhouses you can walk into and you can look at their species plants, right? Which are collector level plants, they're massive. And she walked in them when no one else was around because you're allowed to go in them, right? And she had scissors and was chopping off cuttings and letting them fall into her bag. She stole more than $2,000 worth of plant cuttings and she was caught when Gerald confronted her. They called the cops and she was charged with. She actually pleaded guilty to second degree theft. She was sentenced to one year probation in order to pay restitution to the potted elephant. 
So please don't steal plants. When you first get into plants, feels like, oh my gosh, I just want this one piece, like this just one little piece, or I shouldn't have to pay for this whole plant, or I come here all the time, so I give them all my money, so I deserve this. If you ask for a cutting, most of the times, people will say yes. You just have to ask. Every time I, in my life I've ever asked for a cutting from a nursery, people have said yes. To be fair, I'm not asking for cuttings of like rare plants, you know what I mean? I feel like I should clarify something. When you ask for cuttings from a nursery, it's different than DMing someone who you don't know and that's their property. With the nursery, they're selling plants. Almost every single thing there is for sale. Unless there is something at a nursery that is listed as NFS, which is not for sale. In my opinion, I think you are welcome to ask for cuttings and many other sellers say the same. But again, use your best judgment. If there's a spirit of sanctity there, mm, don't ask for a cutting. <laughs> Probably not a good idea. I've actually only asked for cuttings twice. One was an M. Deliciosa and the other was an H. Carii. So I didn't know that was a controversial opinion to have, but apparently it is. The next part of plant shopping etiquette I wanna talk about is haggling. When is it okay? When is it not okay? This is pretty cut and dry. If you are shopping on a website and the plant has a listed price, and you don't know the seller, do not try to haggle. If someone is selling a plant on Facebook and it's an auction and they have a listed price, you cannot haggle. The times that it is okay to haggle for plants are if people are like, DM me an offer and you throw them an offer and then they, they, they highball you. You're allowed to lowball them from that point on. Or if someone has listed a price and it says plant for sale and then it has a certain price, but let's say that you know the owner of that shop very personally, your friends, you talk on like Instagram all the time and you don't always talk about plants, you talk about other things. I think that if you're friends with someone, you're allowed to be like, hey man, is it okay if I do this instead? Like one time from a shop that I will not name because I don't want you guys to like flood them with haggling. I knew the owner very well. We've done multiple giveaways together and they've sent me multiple plant freebies just because we're friends. They had a plant for sale that was $150. I asked if 100, I asked if 100 shipped would be okay. And they said that that was okay. And then they included an extra free plant in it too. So. If you know someone really well, I think it's okay, but do not haggle with someone if you don't know them or they are asking for a range of prices. And the last part of plant shopping etiquette is how to leave bad reviews. This is really important to me. I genuinely think that before you leave a shop a bad review, you, you should try to let them fix the situation, message them privately. If they don't get back to you for months and they just are AWOL, then I think it's okay to leave a bad review because bad customer service. If they message you and are rude or I don't know, threaten to do something to photos of your <laughs> grand, of someone's grandkids photos. I mean, if you know, you know, leave a bad review, <laughs> post it publicly. If someone does something horrible to you, I think that you're welcome to share that thing to the world because we wanna protect each other from buying from bad people, right? But if someone just accidentally forgot a heat pack and the plant died, you message them privately, they totally refund you and send you a replacement, that might not happen if you just left them a horrible review. I think that before you light a shop on fire, you should try to work it out with the seller and if the seller refuses to help you, then I think it's okay to leave a bad review. Now we're gonna get into my personal pet peeves. These honestly are taboo and etiquette things, but some of these things not everyone can relate to, which is why I put them as pet peeves. So really, it's just more things that you probably shouldn't do or maybe should do because I don't think that everyone can relate to them. I decided to make them its own category and I call them my plant pet peeves. And please let me know in the comment section if you can relate to any of these things and maybe share some stories with me about times that people have had bad etiquette with you or maybe done something kind of weird. I'd love to know. When people criticize others homes, clothes, or personal looks and use that as a reason as to why their advice is invalid. I get people telling me all the time, put on pants, you're not wearing pants, put on pants. I'll tell you guys right now, I'm not wearing pants. <laughs> you can't see it because I'm sitting here in my Eddie Burback Yikes merch, but I'm sitting here in my boy shorts and a shirt. Uh, also, sometimes people get called ugly and it's like, why would anyone listen to you? You're ugly. Or why would anyone listen to you? You're fat, you're too thin. You know, things like that. When people try to reserve cuttings of a plant that was just purchased. Let's say that I, and this happened to me with my Mauna Loa. I bought my Mauna Loa and some person on Instagram was like, oh my gosh, can I buy a cutting from you in a year? Can I put my name on a list? I didn't list it for sale. I will probably never cut it. Unless it was a best friend of mine, I will not be cutting my Mauna Loa, my favorite plant that I have 
pretty much. Don't try to reserve cuttings of a plant that someone just bought. Just be excited for them that they got it. Don't insert your own greed and be like, oh my gosh, I love your plant. Can I have a piece of it? You know what I mean? Lying in order to appeal to someone's sympathies in order to get a plant for free. I will tell you the story behind why this is on my pet peeve list. When I first got Alba Borzigiana, I got a bunch of free cuttings from the university greenhouse at Boise State University because I worked there. I worked there for free. And then when I left, I was eventually gifted the whole plant, right? I had a bunch of these cuttings, right? Because this is before I had the plant, right? This is the very beginning. And someone was like, oh my gosh, my daughter loves that plant. She calls it Snow White and like we don't have one we can't afford it i would just love to give it to her for her birthday you know xyz so i was like oh my gosh i'd love to do that can i write a little letter from snow white you know like you know trying to like play along and like help the kid get her dream plant right well later on that week she put on her story that she purchased a massive monstera elbow and she continues to on this day post on her instagram all these incredible photos of these very expensive plants that she's got. Some of them are species level plants and she totally lied to me in order to get a free plant from me. So yeah, that's happened to me before. That's why I have a really big problem with people being like, oh my gosh, I just, I need this plant. Like I just like, I need yours. It's like, I've been tricked before. I'm not gonna be tricked again. I gave that person an elbow for free and they lied to me. So anyways. When people judge others by what or how many plants that they own. Please remember guys, plants do not equal status. If the only plants that you like are plants that you can find at like Home Depot or Albertsons or like a, a local grocery store, that's totally okay. If those are the plants that you just love and you're not into rare plants or what people call cool plants, that's okay. You are still just as much a part of this community as someone who has hundreds and thousands of dollars of species level plants. You're allowed to like what you wanna like. And if you don't like plants that people like, like Monstera Alba or Pink Princess or things like that, you shouldn't be made to feel bad. I know plenty of people who don't like those plants and that's okay. You're allowed to like what you want to like. And if you don't like what a lot of people like, that's fine. When people judge others by how fast they collect plants and make them feel bad for spending money on plants. This happens to me a lot. I only spend my money on rent, gas, food, and plants. So when I get a new plant, people, I mean, a lot of people, they buy cars, they buy, they go on vacations, they do all this stuff. Literally, I, I don't spend my money on any of that stuff. I just collect plants. So you shouldn't make me feel bad for spending my money on plants when that's what I want to spend my money on. One of my closest friends right now, she just started her YouTube channel. She had people get mad at her because they were like, wow, you must be so rich because you have all of those plants and you just started collecting. It's like, no. She just doesn't spend money on anything else. Don't let people make you feel bad for spending your money on things. Now that we're through the general rules and guidelines of the plant community, let's get into a couple more gritty things, okay? We're gonna talk about house plant clicks and what they look like, how to spot them, how to avoid them or join them if you want to. And I'm gonna share a couple stories and mistakes that I've made socially in the plant community and how you can learn from my mistakes. I will not be dropping any names. There will not be any tea. If you're here for tea, this is not the video you should be on or the channel. But yeah, uh, first of all, I just wanna talk generally about how I have perceived the different platforms. There's YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. There's others like Reddit, uh, but Reddit's kind of, you know, it's Reddit, it's its own, it's its entire own world. The houseplant community on YouTube, depending on the person who is creating content, can either be extremely toxic or very nice and loving. It depends on the atmosphere that that creator gives. Okay, if I'm gonna make a video and I'm gonna go into it with good intentions and positivity, the odds of my subscribers being toxic are low. If I come at it, with drama and I'm like, here's the tea and you know, whatever. And, and tell me about other gossip you guys have heard. People are generally gonna be a little bit more toxic in the comment section. So YouTube is kind of hit or miss. There's trolls here too. There's people that just cause drama to cause drama because they think it's fun and that's stupid. If you're a part of the Facebook community, of houseplants, that is totally okay. There are a couple really nice communities, but for the most part, Facebook has a lot of people who are just there for drama. They get in fights with each other, everyone is pretty short-tempered, and if you say something a little mean to someone, they might decide to label you a scammer. 
An example that I have is I bought a plant from a seller on Facebook and uh, the plant arrived dead. I asked if I could be given a refund and they said that because I didn't purchase a heat pack, I couldn't have a refund and it was my fault, right? Then they went to a private Facebook group that they had of other sellers and warned other sellers that I was a scammer. I had literally said, I will send the plant back to you. I don't need to keep it. Can I have a refund, right? I'll send it back to you. I don't want to keep it. And can I have a refund? Normally on Facebook, if you ask for a refund and to keep the plant, that's like a big red flag for a lot of people. And I agree. I think that's sketchy because if you're keeping the plant, you should pay for it. Maybe a discount could be given, but if you have a plant, you should pay for the plant. But I had offered to send the plant back. I said, I don't want this. It's dead. Can I have a refund? People in that group went to Instagram and messaged people who they did not know were my friends and said, oh my God, Play Me Ashley is trying to scam someone on Facebook right now. This is happening right now. You have to come over to this Facebook group and da 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 and just causing drama. The people that were messaged are my friends. And so they took screenshots and they said, hey, this person is calling you a scammer. So I went back to the original seller, sent them the screenshots and I said, what the hell? Said I'd give you the plant back. Why did you label me a scammer? And she apologized, took her post off of that private group and said it wouldn't happen again. Facebook is dangerous. You can get labeled as a scammer for simply asking for a refund. Not that it's not a great community. I know that there are pockets of good, but I have only experienced bad and drama and people that are out to cause issues. So if you're not someone who likes drama or tea or gossip or anything, I would stay away from Facebook and I stay on Instagram. But if you do like those things and it's totally okay to like those things, it's just not what I like, then Facebook is definitely the place for you. Now, the Instagram community is a little bit different. Instagram is pretty much younger people, millennials, younger, right? Most of the time we're against cyberbullying, we're against canceling, and we're all for just being friends with each other. Most of the time people are in the houseplant community because they want friends. It's not really the same on YouTube or Facebook. There's different reasons why those communities exist. I think a big reason why Facebook in particular kind of can be more toxic is because pretty much anyone can join a group and it's not monitored or mediated and drama is allowed. Um, it's a lot different on Instagram where if you're in a group, it's like a private Instagram group, like a DM section. And most of the time people see each other's posts and they're just positive with each other. So I prefer the Instagram and the YouTube scene. I do not especially like I tried it out and I was like kind of vibing with it but then as soon as that happened to me on Facebook I was like this is not the place for me if I can ask for a refund and instantly be marked as a scammer not for me if you like it that's totally okay I have a bunch of friends on Instagram that are also a part of the Facebook community that's totally fine and that's my opinion that's my opinion on all those things it's not a fact. I know that there's wonderful Facebook groups. I think that if there were public forum pages on Instagram, it would be exactly like Facebook. I don't really think it's just because of Facebook. I just think that Facebook has more of a place for people to meet and then fight and it goes unchecked because moderators can't always catch that. Okay, we're gonna get into clicks. How to get into them, how to avoid them, what they are, how to recognize them. The definition of click is a small group of people with shared interests or features in common who spend time together and do not readily allow others to join them. When I joined the houseplant community, I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna be friends with everyone. I'm just gonna be friends with everyone. I'm not gonna make any enemies and I will just be myself and everyone will love me because I like plants. And that's how most people are when they join the plant community. And a lot of people are like that. They wanna be friends with everyone and there's nothing wrong with that. I did write out a pros and cons list for being friends with everyone. And then the other category, which I call opinion on your sleeve. Um, there are a bunch of good creators who advertise themselves as politically inclined or they advertise themselves as just being everyone's friend and both of them are totally okay. When you join the plant community, you're going to need to put some thought into whether or not you want to be everyone's friend or whether or not you want to wear your opinions on your sleeve. When I joined the plant community originally, I was like, I'm gonna be everyone's friend. By trying to be everyone's friend, I accidentally made a couple people mad at me because I refused to take sides or back up certain people. And those people ended up coming at me with a fiery vengeance because I would not back them up on something that I did not think was right to do. And they still don't like me to this day and talk about 
about it all the time, which is fine. It's their platform. It's awesome to try to be friends with everyone because you know so many people, you have a lot of acquaintances, not close friends, acquaintances, because you can't be close friends with everyone. If you're close friends with everyone, because if you're close friends with everyone, you're gonna learn things about other people and it's going to affect how you view other people. So the pros of wanting to be friends with everyone is you have a lot of surface level friends. Cons are you have no real deep interaction. You only know people on a surface level. A lot of people seem to like that. I know a lot of houseplant YouTubers and uh, Instagram accounts that prefer surface level connection because no one ever really gets mad at them. They never get into drama. They never have conflict and it's great. The pros and cons of wearing your opinion on your sleeve is and joining a clique basically because if you wear your opinion on your sleeve, you will make close friends. You will meet people that really like you and you'll join a clique basically. The pros are you have a close group of friends. The cons are you lose opinionated diversity. If everyone believes the same thing in, as you, you know, you all feel the same way about things, you're likely to delve yourself into certain rabbit holes that could be unhealthy, like bagging on one person or hating one person or, you know, things like that. How I try to do it is I have my click. I am in a click. The only reason that we're not like accepting or readily available of new people is just because the group of people that I'm in, we have seen so much shade. We have seen so much bullying and hate and we, know the names of the people that do those kinds of things. And a lot of the times those people have broader circles and we're just not interested in joining those circles or being friends with those circles. <laughs> and we all support each other. And that means that there are people that we don't support and that's fine. You're welcome to like who you like and dislike who you want to dislike, but I think it's best to have your clique of best friends that you can talk to, but then also have a bunch of surface level friends on Instagram that you could just talk to and be like, oh my gosh, I love your plants. And then you can just vibe about plants. That's the best. I know a lot of people who only talk to their clique and only are friends with everyone. And you can never get a straight answer from those people because they value their reputation above everything else. So they refuse to share personal information of any kind because they're afraid that people won't like them and they shorten their audience, which is true. By saying a lot of things that I say on my channel, I lose the option to have a bigger audience because I'm narrowing down the field. But I have gone into YouTube always knowing that I only want people who are nice, forthcoming, kind, into plants and not toxic, not dramatic. I do not want that kind of community. As my community grows, I want to foster a loving, warm environment where comment section people talk to people and we have a Patreon and I interact with all of you and we're a family. That's what I want. All I'm saying is that it's important to know who you are in the community. It's important to know, do I wanna be friends with everyone or do I not wanna be friends with everyone? Do I just want a small click? And then how to find those clicks. In my opinion, it's always best to form your own group of people, you know, maybe meet a bunch of different friends and then ask them if they wanna form a group chat rather than trying to join a click that already exists because if you join a clique that already exists, you're like the last one there and you're the newest one and people might talk about you behind your back if you say something weird or you know, whatever. It's just, it's like high school. Decide if you wanna click, if you don't wanna click and then make sure that you trust the people in your clique. Don't just be friends with people because they're cool. That's like the biggest thing. <laughs> The next thing is if you decide to join a clique and you don't know the people very well, right? You joined a clique that is already existent, right? You're the new one. Mind what you say. Be very careful about what you say because you do not know the opinions or the feelings of the other people there. Don't assume that just because they like you that they're just gonna agree with everything that you have to say because you're the new one. If you get to know a bunch of people on a really deep level on Instagram and then decide to create a clique, now all of you are new, you all know each other really well and you can go forth and be an awesome group. My iMessage chat that I have with all of the girls that I'm super close friends with because of houseplants is such a good place. It's such a healthy place. Not only do we talk about mental health, but we talk about plants. We talk about everything and being there for each other when we need something or being there for each other if someone else needs something. This is the biggest thing. This is a mistake that I made. It's a huge mistake that I made and it's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done in the houseplant community. I thought it would be such a good idea if all of the houseplant YouTubers that I knew of, which was like, I think 70, were in a big group chat together on Instagram because then we could talk about a bunch of stuff together and we could all be friends and we could like unite the houseplant YouTube community. Then I shared an opinion about something that a lot of people disagreed with. A lot of people agreed with it, but a lot of people disagreed with it. And it ended up ruining how a bunch of people felt about me 
because it was back in September. I had just hit 1000. I had just been monetized. I was new and I made the mistake of this will benefit all of us. What happened was there was gonna be a YouTube strike for creators and I was urging people to tell their subscribers to not participate in the strike because it could hurt smaller creators, which it would hurt smaller creators. How side A saw it was that you are discouraging the right to protest because you're telling people to not participate in the strike. And how side B saw it is, yes, we should tell people to not do this because it will hurt smaller YouTube channels. And for some of us, this is like our dream is we wanna, we wanna do YouTube. And then a lot of people for a while were like, oh my gosh, you're anti right to protest. And I am not anti right to protest. I just didn't think about it in that way. And now that I do understand that, I would have never said that. But the people that were enlightening me about this thing were absolutely rude. They were very rude. They attacked me. None of them like me. And that's okay because my biggest mistake was assuming that all of those creators were friends and that I could just be friends with them too. And a lot of people do not like that. They want to keep their click and not involve with you because you're not in their click. They want to be with them and they get mad when you try to like make a bigger group. And I'm sure that if someone else did it in a different way, it would have worked out, but it's the biggest embarrassment I've ever <laughs> made of myself. And I've never told anyone about it before because it's so embarrassing. I guess I just want to apologize to all those people that <laughs> I hurt the feelings of because I just wasn't thinking about it like that. Obviously, if I had, I wouldn't have said what I said. The next thing we're gonna get into, which is kind of the second to last category is, you need to remember that every single person on the internet is a stranger and you do not know who they are. The biggest mistake I have made in the plant community next to the one I just told you about is trusting someone who I thought I was friends with and learning who they actually were, just trusting the wrong person. I trusted the wrong person. I was starstruck and thought that we were friends but really they just wanted me to do things for them so they didn't have to have their name attached to them. Such as leave negative Instagram comments on certain pages or post to my story about certain shops that they didn't like, that they wanted to cancel. They wanted them gone. And me being the person at the time where I wanted to be friends with everyone, I was always looking at both sides of every story and I just didn't agree with a couple of the things and I told this friend that and ever since then they have hated me. Just remember, don't just trust people because they have big pages or big accounts, anyone. Trust them because you know who they are and they like you and your friends. Uh, I blindly put my trust into someone because I felt like I knew them from watching their Instagram content and I didn't. I didn't know who they were and when I learned who they were, I decided I didn't want to be friends with them. Remember, everyone's a stranger. Just because you feel like you know someone maybe from YouTube, you don't, you don't know who they are. All you know is who they show you on the camera. In my, on my channel, I try to be exactly who I am on camera. So that way when y'all meet me on Patreon or in person, like some of you have, which has been really cool to meet some of you, you're not surprised. I'm not someone different. I am exactly the same, except maybe a little bit more, you know, I use a lot more facial expressions on YouTube because it's more fun for me to edit when I'm not just staring at a face that looks like this the entire time. Remember that everyone is a stranger. You do not know everyone. Do not just trust people because you like their content or their Instagram page or anything. This next one is kind of a tough one. Do not assume that because someone is a YouTube creator that they will be your friend. Just because you feel like you know them through YouTube because you watch them all the time doesn't mean that they know who you are. They probably have no idea who you are or where you live or anything. Don't ask them to meet up. Don't ask, because not only will it be uncomfortable for you to ask, because if you're gonna ask someone like that, probably in your heart, you're like, ooh, should I ask this? If you have to think, should I ask this question? Then don't ask that question. <laughs> you hear that little voice on your shoulder, should I ask them if we can meet up? Should I ask them this? Should I ask them that? Probably don't, probably don't. Unless you know them really well. Unless you've been talking to them for a while and they're your friend and you wanna meet up with them. That's totally fine. Um, I've had people ask me for a bunch of private information, where I live, what city I am, where I live in that city, what school I went to, what high school. Don't ask people those questions. Those are normal questions to ask people who you're becoming friends with in real life, but it's different on the internet. The rules are different. People are trying to be creepy. We don't like those creepy people. And then further, kind of like elaborating on that, don't assume that everyone that you meet on Instagram or all of the pages that you like on Instagram are going to like you back. And that hurts. It happens to me all the time. I wanna be friends with a lot of people who have decided that they either don't like me 
support. It's not that they don't like me, but I'm just not friend material for them. Don't slide into their DMs and be like, hey, can we be best friends? Can we be best plant friends or can we be friends? If you wanna be their friend, just be nice to them. Just be their friend and be there for them. Okay, we're wrapping up. I'm going to just talk about a couple of things that don't have a category, but I feel like need to be said. There are these things, they are called plant zones. You need to make sure that you know your zone. I am in zone 7A, B. I live in both of those zones. It's really weird, they overlap. Because of those zones, I have to grow my plants in very specific ways. You need to make sure that uh, before you ask for advice from other people, you ask what zone that they live in because someone might be giving you advice on how to grow your plants because they see you growing your plants and they're like, oh my gosh, this girl doesn't have a humidifier or this girl doesn't have this or this or boy or you know, whoever. And they want to give you advice because they're like, oh my gosh, you're growing your plants horribly wrong. They might just live in Florida. <laughs> The resting humidity might just be 80% in their house and so they don't need a humidifier. You know what I'm saying? So make sure that you know zones before you offer or take advice and make sure to learn everything that you can about your zone and what plants you can grow in those zones. I want everyone to say this with me. It is normal to kill plants. It is so, so, so normal to kill plants that I have probably killed half of the plants in my life that I have ever purchased. Because when you buy plants, most of the time, those plants that you buy in the very beginning, you're not gonna keep, they're gonna die. Because what are you doing? You're learning how to be a plant parent, right? You're not a plant parent yet, figuring it out. You're gonna kill some plants. Sometimes, I'll be honest with you guys, if I get bored of a plant and it wasn't expensive, I'll just toss it. I'll just get bored of a calathea and be like, bye. You know what I mean? It's normal. I feel like it needs to be normalized that killing plants is normal because so many people are afraid to be like, oh my gosh, you killed a plant and then they get canceled. It's not gonna happen. Everyone kills plants. It's totally normal. Don't try to kill your plants, but if a plant dies or you don't wanna work on rehabbing it because it's so close to being dead, you can throw it away. It can die. It's normal. This last one is very important. Pests are normal. Houseplant pests are normal. When I first got into plants, I was like, oh my God, there's all these plants, there's no bugs, it's amazing. And then you know what I learned? Oh my gosh, I have mealybugs. <gasps> oh my gosh, I have scale. And I was like, I don't know if I can handle these bugs. Like if there's gonna be bugs around all the time, I don't think I can have plants. And I honestly consider just, even though I liked plants, not collecting them anymore because I didn't wanna deal with the bugs. What you have to understand is if you have plants, you're gonna have bugs sometimes. You might not always have bugs, but you will at some point get bugs. I had a little baby spider mite outbreak and I just wiped off all my leaves. I think it was like two days ago and everything was fine. It was totally fine. There are some bugs that are scarier than others like thrips. Mealy bugs are super duper gross. <laughs> Those are like disgusting. And scale, depending on the type of scale that you can get, it can actually just live on your walls without plants for fun because that's a thing, I guess. All I'm saying is pests are normal and neem oil is a lie. Neem oil is preventative. You put it on your plants twice a week with, you dilute it, right? That's how you prevent pests with neem oil. Do not try to treat plants that have pests with neem oil. It will not get rid of them. Everyone says that it does. Well, not everyone. A couple people say that it does, but it really doesn't. And if it does, it's probably like spider mites, something that you can wipe away with water and they will go away. They really, really, really need a pesticide. Uh, my favorite is Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew, which was recommended to me by a YouTube commenter. And even though pests are normal, they are not good. You should not let pests thrive in your house. You should make sure to kill them. All right, and the last point in this entire video, your house plants can be fertilized year round. You can fertilize your plants like once a week. I mean, you should only fertilize your plants when you're watering them. You shouldn't just like drop fertilizer in them because it can burn the plant roots. There's a way to do it. Plan on making a fertilizing video pretty soon here because a lot of people have been asking for it. Uh, the fertilizer that I use is the only fertilizer I've ever used. It's called Newt. You can go to buynewt.com forward slash Ashley with a lowercase a to check it out. The link does not work through YouTube. I do not know why we have tried to fix it. It does not work. So you can visit me on Instagram at Plant Me Ashley to get nine gallons for $9, which is half the price basically of what it would cost if you were to sign up without a code. But I use Newt all the time. I use so much of it. They've started just sending me mason jars of it, uh, which is pretty incredible. Thank you so much, Newt. I love you. Uh, but Newt works incredible. I normally see results within a week. 
If you made it through this video, I applaud you. We used two whole camera batteries and the sun is down. It is dark outside. But thank you guys for being here. Uh, I hope that this little kind of beginner's guide to the houseplant community was helpful. I hope that it helped you kind of learn some plant taboos, some rules that you maybe should follow, how to meet people, how to find clicks, how to avoid clicks, you know, things like that. I hope that you were able to take something away from this video and learn from my mistakes that I have made in the houseplant community and mistakes that I've seen other people made. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and tweet me at PlantMeAshley. If you have any more questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section down below. If you relate to any of the things that I talked about, I'd love to hear more about them in the comment section. If you have friends who maybe are new to the houseplant community, you're totally welcome to share them this video and be like, hey, you wanna join the plant community? Here's a list of do's and don'ts. Here's how to interact in the plant community. But other than that, thank you guys so much for being here. Let me know if you agree or disagree with me in the comment section. Make sure you like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next houseplant section. Bye.